Whether at home or work, life is about relationships. Welcome to Small Change, Big Dividends with your host, Branch Isole. Small Change, Big Dividends shares steps, tools, and tips for personal career and spiritual growth. So please welcome the host of Small Change, Big Dividends, Branch Isole. Perhaps you've heard the term missing link. It's used most often as a label describing a quote unquote missing part of evolution. Missing link refers to an indistinguishable or missing hereditary piece between man and his evolutionary forerunners. However, there are two realms of existence that have missing links the physical, and the spiritual. There are also two separate identities within this term. Again, one is physical and the other is spiritual. The missing link between us and the spiritual realm is an active awareness of morals and ethics. So if you want to hear more, stay tuned. That's what we're talking about today. Coming to you from deep in the forest, Near the banks of the Wachita River, you're watching and listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends on the Bold Brave Media, TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branch Soleil. Small Changes, Big Dividends is a show where your questions are part of the program. So if you have a question, you can call during the live show to our toll-free number, 1-866-451. 1451. Or you can email your question anytime during the week to my website, branchisole.com. Thanks for joining me again today. On Small Changes, Big Dividends, we talk about personal, career, and spiritual Christianity, essentials for growth filled living. Each week, I share Manao with listeners from around the world. And today, I'm going to share some small changes that can pay big dividends in your relationships and in your life. Because life is about relationships, but it's healthy relationships that encourage and embrace growth. So what is spiritual grounding? And why is spiritual grounding and its strength a game changer in life? Where does it come from? How does one get it? And how do we keep it active? Well, first and foremost, having an active or ever strengthening that is growing spiritual connection brings balance into our life. Are there trade offs? Yes. As with every decision or choice we are presented with daily, but more balance means a more fulfilling life. And this is the goal we're searching for. So how can spiritual presence guide, aid, or counsel? How does a growing spirituality bring balance to a chaotic and stress-filled life? You see, we live pressure cooker lifestyles, leaving little time for anything other than keeping up. American life was once rooted in keeping up with the Joneses. Now, for many, it's keeping up to survive the day. You see, the trauma and drama of modern life can be hectic. And many forget their life is designed to be more than just a job, career, or family tied to indebtedness. As our essence, we are spirit, manifested in a corporeal body. We are spiritually energy at our core that exists beneath layers of who we think we are and who we present to the world. To be or not to be was Hamlet's question. The question for those living close to the prophesied end times that we are is whether to engage Christ or not. This is fundamentally the question in every life. In the coming years, we will each confront and select how active our spirituality will be, because we're each a living soul, 
an energy packet with an active or inactive spirit. An inactive spirit is exactly that. It's inactive, having little or no interaction with our mind and body. It's existing, yes, but only as a placeholder. An active spirit, on the other hand, is active in degrees. You see, on our paths in life, we are all at different stages, as are our spirits. We can have a fleeting of awareness at one end of the spectrum, while others may have full immersion at the other end. Irrespective of where you and I may be on our spiritual journey, life's baseline condition is an active spirit in concert and communication with the Holy Trinity of Christ. When God's Spirit lives within us, no matter the degree of our voluntary immersion, His Spirit lives for us as guide and counselor. He describes this for us in John 14, 16 and John 14, 26. When we invite words of, from God, when we invite God's Spirit, the Word, Jesus, to abide with us, it's accepted and never rescinded. You see, once we invite Him and He sends His Spirit to be with us, He's always with us. We may turn aside, but He will never abandon us. He has accepted our invitation of a surrendered heart. You see, where the Spirit of the Lord lives, his, He strengthens mind, body, and our spirit. Think of the Lord's Spirit within you as a cosmic GPS. So every time you're faced with stress, struggle, and conflict, stop. Before you respond, take a breath and ask yourself, what would God have me do in this situation? You see, when His Spirit abides with you, His Spirit will answer. And this is His promise. His Spirit will guide your thoughts. His Spirit will give yours the strength and power to respond as He would have you do, as if He were standing there with you. His Spirit of truth will show you truth. And His truth will give you counsel to avoid the impending holes of adversity that you may be facing. You see, it's always easier to step around a hole than to try and dig yourself out. And God's Spirit, through belief in Christ, offers you a path from adversity. So whether you hear, actually listen, or respond is up to you. But once Christ's Spirit is with you, He's always there for you. And it's up to you to decide if you'll choose the Lord's way or repeat the old pattern response, which you've used your entire life and probably hasn't worked as much as you would like it to. Christ, Spirit within, is your spiritual grounding. His Spirit responds with your spiritual strength. And the more you desire and allow your spirit to grow in his and with his, the more emboldened your understanding of this world will become. Once you know the truth, you'll see the truth in everything that you do. So, we each come into this world with a veil that covers our mind's eye, with an opaqueness that blurs our conscious mind. And this happens with our very first breath. This veil obscures our understanding. And with every question, every choice, every decision we make in Life 101, we come from a place of life-possessing innate truth. Because in our spiritual essence, we have the Spirit of God as our Creator. And because He is truth, we have a spiritual essence, 
or spirit of origination that is truth. When we have this truth, we allow ourselves to see truth and to recognize it. But we have to look behind the veil. You see, this veil intent is present so that our clarity of truth is blurred. But when it's removed, we have new opportunities for success in life, in relationships, and in ourselves. Because truth reveals what's been hidden. You see, Life 101, the, the life we know from birth, keeps us entrenched firmly in the grasp of the world's ways, which are all rooted in the essential question we always ask ourselves with every choice of decision. What's in it for me? What lies behind the veil are opportunities to identify the morals and ethical responses to every situation we face. But what are these moral and ethical responses? And where do they come from? Well, simply stated, the morals and ethics are God's character and nature in action. But what are God's character and nature? Well, Scripture tells us his character is truth, his nature is love. You see, life's purpose is love, and truth is its expression. So now you may be asking, well, where does this awareness of morals and ethics come from? It comes from the knowledge and wisdom gained when we start our restart, that spiritual relationship with God, through the Spirit of Christ himself. When we invite him in and he sends his Spirit to be with us, we then can see in every situation what the moral or ethical response will be and can be. So now you may be asking, well, Branch, how do we get this moral and ethical wisdom guidance? Well, you know, when we come into this life, we have a spirit, but it's inactive. It only responds to right or wrong situations, right or wrong questions. And because it's limited, to responding to a right or wrong situation, it most often plays out as reward or punishment. And from early age on, we know what punishment looks like. When we activate our inactive spirit to its full cognition and its full understanding, we then know what the moral or ethical response may be. It's our spirit of origin a combination of our soul, which is an electrical charged unit from the universe, combined with our spiritual essence from God as creator. It's these two that make up our spirit of origination, a combination of soul and spirit. We're going to pause for our first break. When we come back, we're going to look at spiritual essence and how to make it active from a re inactive state. You're watching and listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends on the Bold Brave Media TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branch Isolay. I'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching and listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends. I'm your host, Branch Isolay. So we're talking about our spiritual essence and why it's inactive. Well, it's inactive because it's only partially operational. And this happens with our very first breath. It's inactive because it operates in a vacuum. It's missing most of its potential responsiveness. So how and why does it continue to be inactive? Well, as I said before the break, it only responds to right or wrong, reward or punishment interactions. And as humans, we naturally embrace the right or wrong as our guide to decisions. We do this by default because it's what we learn as children. Because it's what we know, and it's what we've learned from our earliest cognition as an infant and then as a toddler, 
and it's what we use every day, our focus is always on is the situation or the question or the dilemma I face going to be right or wrong for me? Meaning, is it going to result in a reward or a punishment? And it's this operational response process that's rooted in our understanding from our earliest childhood. You know, if you've ever read a time machine story or seen a time machine movie, you know that when the hero or the heroine makes a small change, it can ripple forward or backward, causing entirely new consequences that change the present. Well, the same is true for us. By changing familiar habits, behaviors, or responses, with renewed present knowledge, it can alter our future response. Remember, the world's design and purpose is to challenge us because at our core, through our actions, decisions, and choices, the world's path entices us all it can. It entices us with the world's ways that we know and embrace. And these are the ways that prompt and promote our attitudes, beliefs, and perceptions, and that are designed to keep us striving for accumulating possessions and adulation and recognized elevation in the eyes of others. These are our prime motivators from childhood through adulthood. And these are the motivations that draw us into situations that continually test our vulnerabilities. In spite of all, all the things we may know and all the previous outcomes or risks that we've taken. You see, some view spiritual cognition as boring, but for the spiritually grounded, this scene of boredom is simply a disguise because just below the surface of this perceived complacency exists a new balance of clarity. Spiritual grounding and growth provides that balance because it incorporates not only our human need to participate in life, but it also provides opportunities to embrace active regard for our growing spiritual connection that we have now found going into life 101A. You see, the life that we know from birth is life 101. But when we've reconnected with God through the Spirit of Christ, we now have the Spirit of truth in us, abiding with our spirit. And by having his Spirit, we now see and recognize truth everywhere in our life. This is life 101A. It's this active spiritual engagement that automatically arouses active forethought and helps us to avoid adversities in daily life. And yet, it's our nature to look for ways to embellish or advance our life and lifestyles, the things that the world promotes and rewards. You see, because of this situation of the world's ways being in, inculcated, ingrained in us from our earliest cognitions, the breadth and depth of today's global corruption permeates every nook and cranny of our physical existence. And in our 21st century, it's doing it as never before. You see, mankind's systems permanently are stained with corruption. It's been this way since day one. Evil, decay, and loss are the ways of the world. So this is not a new phenomenon. It's been with humanity for as long as we've been together on the planet in groups and tribes. The world advances and promotes this corrupted living. But as more people in our day and age learn more information and perceive their daily survival as a fight with each other and within themselves, and as we strive to possess more material goods and enjoy instant access to the world's information, 
no new level of grandiose ascension seems to be enough. The world's definitive choice is one of lemming participation. Because we're not only participants in our victimization of our own social order, it's our insatiable desires for immediate gratification without acknowledgement of consequence that's now become commonplace in our 21st century lifestyle. The coddling and covering up of inappropriate and abusive behavior gives license, or at least tacit approval, in every field of endeavor, commerce, politics, and social decorum today. We are now witnessing proof positive that the tail now wags the dog. And if we press inward with the world's encouragement of what's in it for me, the decisions that we make appear to hold benefits that are perceived as advantages. But with the spirit of clarity, we now see the negative consequences that can be easily aroused each time we must decide or interact. We have to decide what will the response be that we will give and how do we respond to the consequences of the risk and reward that we face in our daily lives. This is the stage upon which many essential struggles in daily life play out. So our question again is why? Simply stated, because our focus today most often is on self and it's been honed as our first and most consistent response. So choosing what we hope is best for us and praying that what we choose may be best for us in lieu of what the actual costs or harm to ourselves and to others may be in that decision. You see, all that we do is what we are as a species. And when we're void of spiritual guidance, the objects of our desires, that is, the things that we covet, while we're thinking they are in our best interest, often aren't. And we learn this from experience. This is why knowing ahead of time what the difficulties we face may be and how deep those holes we might get in to start digging. You see, the root of most problems and issues is a self-centered indulgence. It's a common condition of our carnal world and our lifestyle choices. On the other hand, a spiritually guided inner compass offers newness of self at life's pivotal moments. So rather than being mired in confluence of life's issues or relationship problems, believers with reactivated spirits can now move forward renewed. Their decisions are no longer hoped for because the spiritual strength prepares them to avoid life's holes of adversity. And yet, deep within us always exists a spark of understanding. It's by our very existence that we each possess this spiritual pilot light within our soul. And although this spiritual light is never extinguished, for many, it operates without full illumination. For some, it flickers. For many, it sputters, only to remain in a dormant state as an inactive spirit. For a few, however, spirituality takes hold and the flame roars to life, revealing a new understanding, a new way of living, with renewed potential guided by the essence of your spirit or origination. It's in this way that we discover and learn the physical spiritual balance. It's in this risk reward occasion called life that vast number of people today are awash with media coverage to sway their thoughts and their desires. And while others are busy coping with daydreams, hopefully anticipating 
a lifestyle that they can endlessly enjoy when we live embracing the world and encouraged by accumulated possessions it's only natural that our goals and accomplishments are measured by the world's rewards so is there a difference between spiritual living and carnal living yes is one boring while the other one thrills well perhaps it's a common misconception that life must be one or the other you see many hear the siren call of gaining rewards but at what risk spiritual presence girds balance it promotes longevity and through the presence and calm of the spirit we go forward not being alone in the struggle we now have the lord's spiritual strength within us to guide us to aid us to counsel us on small changes big dividends we discuss topics that few people across the planet are paying attention to or fully understand and that's where we're going to go after our second break you're watching and listening to small changes big dividends on the bold brave media tv and talk global network i'm your host branchy soleil and i'll be right back welcome back you're watching and listening to small changes big dividends i'm your host branchy soleil so what can we expect our future to look like well think of it this way imagine you're bringing a pot of cold water to a boil the cold water here represents the 2008 great recession we fill the pot and turn up the heat and as the water becomes tepid we notice a change taking place that is disconcerting yet not alarming as we reduce the fire the water returns to its new normal sometime later we increase the heat to a higher setting as small bubbles start to form on the bottom of the pot we've now reached COVID-19 we notice they begin spreading around the bottom edge and then progressively start inward across the bottom of the surface almost imperceptibly larger bubbles form and the quickening of the uh, boil exists so that it's out of control and as we end the first round of global infections from COVID-19 and prepare for what comes next in the pre-vaccine resurgence we notice that there's little let up and now the enlarging bu bubbles being created start to turn the water into a gaseous state the end time events have specific purpose designed to bring people back to Jesus for his role as Savior, that is, the Christ or the Messiah. The end time events are this bubbling water that goes from water to hot water to boiling water and then to gas. These events are God's way to initiate and at the same time invite a worldwide revival described in Matthew 24, 14. And as with our boiling pot of water, our awareness is meant to be raised with each succeeding heated event. The consequences of unprepared belief will affect people across the planet. Melding and rippling from one place to the next and from one affected or infected area to another. So whether it's health related, economics, social disruption, crime and violence, destructive storms, or governments that will falter and fail with inadequate preparation and responses, the heat continues to be turned up. And each of the end time events that we start to see unfolding in real time become more cataclysmic, more increased in frequency and severity. This uninterrupted escalation of troubles and turmoil denote the prophesied end times. Now, there may temp be temporary lulls where you live, 
but the consequences of insurmountable problems will continue to persist globally with little interruption. Events moving in concert, spreading neighborhood to neighborhood, nation to nation, will become more acute as the capabilities to shift the unending attempts to accommodate the immediacy of that moment's emergency. As with our boiling water, end time events bring unpleasantness, layer upon layer, hampering further answers and responses. So our only questions start to be, how badly burned will we be before we get out of the water? How much suffering will we endure and at what cost? And what could we have done before the heat went from cold to tepid to boiling? And it gets worse. How can we prepare? Well, God gives us each an opportunity to come to know him and to know his character and nature through Christ Jesus. He is warning us out of his love and compassion, as well as his grace and mercy, so that we'll know how to sidestep the destruction and the death coming in the last days. As events and instances for this new awareness increase, so too will the fallout of the severity of each of these succeeding events. So how much suffering will you choose to endure before you look for relief? How many end time event consequences will you ignore before you start to understand? And how much death and destruction will you witness or allow your family to endure before you share with them the way God has provided for his believing children? Avoid the coming perils. How? Simple. Establish a spiritually grounded relationship with Christ Jesus. You see, it's in him that our present and our future can be saved. Now, in this week's prophecy segment, we're going to continue to look at America's role in the coming end times and last days. As the American empire slides into disarray and demise, as has every empire before it, the rich and powerful will continue to make a mockery of law and justice. Breaking the backs of moral and ethical standards, which is evident today everywhere we look, we can now acknowledge the aberration of laws, codes, and decency all around us. And at the same time, we're conditioned to ever be on the prowl for an advantage at every turn and in every situation. Again, this is the way of the world. I know prophecy can be daunting, it can be confusing, it can be downright difficult to make sense of. But remember, at your core, your spirit, occupying a human corporeal a body as a vessel. So you have the spirit of origination and a connection with God as creator from first breath. Today, our world is in deep conflict with loss of life and property imploding everywhere, from Gaza to Ukraine to the storms and the disasters that we face here in our own country. Well, believe it or not, prophecy tells us exactly what this course and this path will mean for America as a country and Americans as a people. In the book of Revelation, Scripture introduces readers and listeners to mystery Babylon. You see, it's Babylon's spirit of evil and corruption that's been with mankind since its beginning and is now actively engaged throughout and without and within the world through manifestations of corrupt intent. Self-indulgence and embracing the world's ways has come home to roost, and it's come home to roost in the world's greatest empire 
that's ever existed. But even in our greatness, in Revelation 18.4, God issues a warning to mystery Babylon's inhabitants. He says, come out of her, my people, meaning come out of her, my believers, believers in me and believers in Christ Jesus, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. You see, this is the plea the Lord is sharing with his believers before the coming tribulation years. Come out of her before she suffers, he says. With the last days and end time warnings, God is declaring to the world in our day, in our time, right now, that the important players on the world stage will cease to exist. And today you're hearing this warning before it actualizes and occurs. If you choose to stay, then at least start a spiritual walk with Christ Jesus. Because when America is cut off from the rest of the world, and the world comes to despise our inept leaders and arrogant self-centeredness, those who were once our friends will turn their backs as they have no interest in watching us as a country destroy ourselves from the inside out. You see, prophecy refers to America in the end times as Mystery Babylon. And as you might imagine, just from the sound of it, that identification is not an admirable one, but it certainly is deserved. Why? Because as a people, as a country, as the world's historical pinnacle of industrial and commercial affluence, supported by its democracy and its freedoms, America has managed to export to the rest of the world its desires in an ever-escalating crescendo grounded in the little god of self. We've turned the world into imitators of our corruption and our evil. And now, hand in hand with our war machine capabilities, our economic and environmental exploitation apparatuses, America has championed offensive interference across the planet ever since the Industrial Revolution. It's America that has embraced and reveled in narcissistic, overlord attitudes to every global area of life. But like all the empires before it, America has devised and conceived every possible way to exploit and then expunge every activity of human endeavor. This most recent America First mentality is purposed to bleed and suck the life out of every country, nation, or people. The prince of this world knows how he wants things to play out. And we have wholeheartedly embraced and encouraged and supported this desire among the people of the world. So what's waiting ahead? Well, waiting in the shadows to employ a mob boss like taste of the skim are those who are always lusting for greed power, and control. And in our 21st century, it's now greed on steroids as we rampage around the world, led by corporations and corrupt politicians, sowing seeds of our own destruction. But you can sidestep it. You don't need to be destroyed with it. But following from every footstep of previous powerful empires the world has endured, Many countries have been convinced to throw in with the power of fiat currencies as the backbone of life's successes, with cyber currencies nibbling at the debt of our future decay. And in this way, America has shown the world its ways, yet it's quickly becoming eclipsed by other nations who've learned those lessons so well. So yes, America is duly noted 
in end times prophecy. We're going to take our final break. When we come back, we've got a question from Carl in Bozeman, Montana. You're watching and listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends on the Bold Brave Media, TV and Talk, Global Network. I'm your host, Branchy e. Soleil. I'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching and listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends. I'm your host, Branchy e. Soleil. This week's question comes from Carl in Bozeman, Montana, who asks, How will we know the end is actually near or here? Will there be signs? Great question, Carl. Thanks for the email. Prophecy's entire focus and purpose is to inform us, to warn us, and to alert us to future events that will allow us to recognize these end time events unfolding. You see, many of these signs appear veiled or hidden, and we're unaware that they're part of prophecy. Most prophecies require some digging or research to draw the links that provide the timing. And timing is the most important part of all of this unveiling of the end times. That said, God wants us to know. So it helps to see the big picture by connecting these smaller dots and events. The problem today is most in our world are uninformed, uninterested, unbelieving. Most people don't hear or they don't want to hear. So they simply ignore or doubt the possibility of these actual end time and last days events occurring. But when God speaks or shows us, it requires that we trust that he's telling us the truth. You see, we live in a world that doesn't want to know the truth. Therefore, it ignores God and it ignores what he shares. Prophecy doesn't tell us when the world will end, but it does forewarn us by sharing events and people to recognize before we actually witness them occur. You see, there are 1,817, 1,817 prophecies in the Bible, and every one of them refers to Jesus as the Christ or the Messiah. Most have already occurred, and each that has come to pass has happened exactly as foretold. You see, I'm often asked about end times or last day signs that have taken decades, even centuries, to unfold between reading and actualization, depending on when they were shared. Think of it this way. Before you got a driver's license, you prepared, right? You got a driver's manual and you studied. You got a vehicle to practice. You continued learning and practicing how to become more efficient and proficient behind the wheel. When you were fully prepared and ready, you went and you took the driver's test. Well, same holds true for end times and last day's events that the world sees as signs. Their culminations will be revealed by what we see or expect and experience in incremental steps. These will be unmistakable, undeniable, and unmissable signs seen by the entire world, indicating that the end is imminent. But here's the caveat. Only those aware of prophecy will recognize the links or the connections. At the start and the end of the Ezekiel War, which is on our horizon now, it will be the third prophecy that God promised the entire world would witness in the end times. The Ezekiel War is described in Ezekiel 38. So when you see in the news a military coalition led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey preparing to invade Israel's Golan Heights region, that's the mountains of Israel's north, under the auspices of enforcing a UN Resolution 2334, 
and it looks like Israel will be completely destroyed, God himself has said he will intervene on Israel's behalf and destroy all of her enemies. When you see the treaty signed, confirmed, and accepted that will end this conflict in our future, the man who will become the Antichrist will step forward as the author, architect, or broker of this treaty. And we're told that in Daniel 9, 27. Also, when you see the third Jewish temple being built in Jerusalem, know that the end is close at hand. If you know prophecy and you see these signs, you will be prepared. Thanks for joining me today. On next week's show, it's going to be one of our fifth Wednesday special guest episodes. And I've, I've invited Chet Galaski to join us. He's going to talk about a topic that many people are familiar with and many others are often confused about, diabetes. Chet will also be sharing his Christian walk and information about some of his books. So you're welcome to join our podcast live next Wednesday from 4 to 5 Eastern Time right here on the Bold Brave Media TV and Talk Global Network. And if you have questions about diabetes, feel free to call in and get them answered by an expert. On Small Changes, Big Dividends, we discuss personal, career, and spiritual Christianity essentials for growth-filled living. If you know somebody who could benefit from today's episode, please share it with them. If today's show has been helpful for you, please give us a rating and review. And to know more about my work, I invite you to visit my website, branchysole.com, or my YouTube channel, Branchy Soleil. Today's show has been sponsored by Crystal Creek Farm. If you have a business, a product, or a service you'd like to share with the world, on Small Changes Big Dividend, simply send your inquiry to the website. You've been watching and listening to Small Changes Big Dividends. Until next week, keep growing and be in the world, not of the world. This has been Small Change Big Dividends. When you're ready for healthier, more successful relationships at home or work, Small Change Big Dividends is your show. Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.